TJ, you say that Coach Pinkle, he really had no choice but to back his players. But you're citing it. Some people have said it had to do with money, but you're citing a different reason. Why, why do you think he had to back his players? Well, to deal with recruiting. I mean, you look at the any given uh, position group, uh, I don't know that there's been a starting corner at the University of Missouri that has been a Caucasian, a white player in years. Uh, there's very few uh, white receivers, very few white defensive linemen. And if you want to continue to recruit African-American players and you're showing them that you won't stand behind them in something that they believe in, I don't know that you'd be ever, ever be able to do that again. Yeah, it's an interesting point you bring up, actually one that a local sports columnist there uh, brought up yesterday as well, saying part of it was money and part of it is just what you described there. But I also know that you say it's ridiculous that President Wolf resigned. Why do you say that? Well, I mean, let's be honest, he didn't resign by choice. This wasn't a voluntary action. He came out with a statement yesterday, well, two days ago now, stating that he wants to come to the negotiation table and he'd like to get this thing together and work as hard as he can to come to a solution. The very next day, he walks out and says, the buck stops here, I'm resigning. So let's not act like he just said, you know, I can't do the job anymore. I think it's sort of ridiculous that we're blaming a man who is in charge of 35,000 students and there's been three documented cases, and, and let's not act like there's not racism everywhere. There is, but there's been three documented cases, and I don't know how you stop those people. If we're always going to blame the leaders of what's going on, then we need to remove the President of the United States and the governor of every state, because there's a lot of murders that happen frequently, and if we're just going straight to the top and blaming that person, I think that's an issue. I do, I want to ask you about something, and this was eye-opening to me when I saw this video. This is Tim Wolf um, talking to students, kind of confronting mm -hmm. them uh, on uh, the Kansas City campus. Let's watch. I will give you an answer, and I'm sure it will be a wrong answer. You gonna answer. Google it? I will give you an answer, and I'm sure it will be a wrong answer. What, is so, what, is so, what do you think systematic know. oppression it's, is? It's systematic oppression is because you don't believe that you have the equal opportunity for success. You don't believe Money, money, money. Did you, did you just blame us for systematic oppression, Tim I mean, you can kind of see there, TJ, how he sort of steps in it because he's dismissing the students' concerns. He says, you don't believe. It, it's sort of this, like, I'm sorry that you feel this way kind of apology, which is, you know, never goes over well. I mean, isn't in, in some way might he be a part of the problem? You know, honestly, I don't know that he wasn't a part of the problem, but I don't think we know that he was either. And just now, they asked him a question about his definition of systematic oppression. How do we know that he was talking directly to those people? He was giving his definition, which, by the way, is very wrong and something he needs to go look up. That's not what systematic oppression is. But he's not talking directly to these people. And I don't know that having a wrong definition of a word is cause for firing. Um, I do want you to hear now from Peyton Head. He is the president of the Missouri Student Association. He says the incidents of racism are not on the rise, but it's really the students and their response that has changed. Let's listen. We are not seeing more incidents. What we're seeing is students who are empowered to speak about these incidents on their campuses around the nation. The University of Missouri is by no means a bad school. What we're seeing right here is that students are empowered to speak up about what is happening here. And it's empowering other students around the nation to speak up about what is happening on their campuses as well. Peyton Head, I mean, Peyton Head is basically saying, it's not that things have, there's been some uptick in this, it's that we're finally fed up and we feel like we're empowered to do something about it. I know you, you uh, went to Mizzou uh, starting 2009-2010 mm -hmm. school year. What, did you see anything that sort of rings true to what you've heard about? Well, I don't think he's wrong at all. In fact, we're living in 2015. This is probably the least racist time in history. Like, we progress every year. Imagine going back to the 70s with today's generation. Everyone would be fighting in the streets. It would be absolute chaos. So we're in a position right now where we're in the least racist time in history, but because of the national media, because you have people like Dylan Roof who is willing to murder nine people in a church just because of their color, there are some big instances 
uh, um, instances, and we have some issues. Now, they're being reported, and there's more awareness to them, and that's great, but I think he's absolutely right. I don't think there's any difference from today. In fact, I actually think it's better, and we still need to work to minimize that, but Isn't I don't there, know that... I, I guess I'm so. getting it. Wasn't there some sort of incident while you were there that had to do with yeah. the Black Cultural Center? Tell me about that. Yeah. Uh, 2010, actually, uh, there was a group of ROTC white members, students, who, I think it was 3 a.m. in the morning, decided it would be funny to go to Walmart, get some cotton balls, and throw them in the bushes of the Black Culture Center. They were later caught. I think it took a few months. They figured out who it was, and I think they were expelled and, and charged with a hate crime. Okay. Um, so that's something that you sort of witnessed firsthand. I know you say that you feel like these things sort of exist um, across the board. We heard some of that from Peyton Head as well. Um, I, I am curious, having taken this stance where you say it's ridiculous that President Wolf mm -hmm. resigned, are you getting any backlash from that? Social media <laughs> backlash or criticism? Yeah, go read my Twitter. Um, that, you Tell know, what's, what, this is... This is the most upsetting part of this whole thing, right? So when this whole thing started, what I did, the first thing I did before I sent out any opinions or even formed my own opinion, I texted some of my good friends, Kim English, uh, who is a former black player, a basketball player at Missouri. Wes Kemp was a receiver with me. LaDamian Washington was a receiver with me. Tommy Saunders. And there's a group of guys that I wanted to get their input and, and try to figure out exactly what their side of the story is. And you see that people have no understanding of what the other side is like. And if we just seek to understand each other, then people will then have a much higher tolerance.